Well, of all the uh, world leaders, North Korea's Kim Jong-un has been perhaps most targeted by Trump's tweets. After one of his most recent posts, the battle of words between the two did descend into insults about the size and power of their nuclear buttons. The entire US mainland is within the range of our nuclear strike, and the button is always on the table in my office. They should clearly know that this is certainly not a threat, but rather a reality. Will someone from his depleted and food-starved regime please inform him that I too have a nuclear button, but it's a much bigger and more powerful one than his, and my button works. I hope, personally, that such rhetoric, either by the side of DPRK, by its uh, supreme leader, or by the United States through its president, Donald Trump, will calm down. The world does not need such jingoism or war rhetorics. Right now, the situation is in a stalemate. Uh, the DPRK has gained the time to develop its nuclear weapon in a more and more sophisticated way. And the United States uh, has not yet reached the point of uh, deciding to use military means to solve the problem. But I don't think everything has been exhausted. We still need to try the best, even though the likelihood of a diplomatic solution is becoming remoter and remoter. Well, in a slightly more positive uh, development, Kim Jong-un has reopened a cross-border communications link with South Korea in what's been seen as a significant diplomatic breakthrough. However, the standoff between the US and North Korea does look set to continue into 2018 after what's already been 12 months of personal attacks and vicious threats from both sides. The era of strategic patience with the North Korean regime has failed. North Korea best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury. The U.S. neglects the international community's will to establish peace on the Korean peninsula. They behave like children fighting each other in kindergarten and nobody can stop them. And we can't have madmen out there shooting rockets all over the place. We will have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. Rocket Man is on a suicide mission for himself. No one other than Trump himself is on a suicide mission. We need a pause. We need dialogue. He is a sick puppy. OK, well, to uh, discuss Trump's latest comments, let's bring in Joseph Cheng. He's a professor and political analyst, too, at Hong Kong uh, City University and joins us now. Good afternoon to you, Joseph. Um, we were just hearing there some examples of the insults uh, both leaders have traded over the last few months or so. How dangerous is this relationship, do you think, between Trump and Kim Jong-un, considering the now joking, it seems, about the size of each other's nuclear buttons. I mean, that's not something to joke about, is it, nuclear war? This is certainly not anything to joke about, but I think the situation, uh, despite the confrontational rhetoric, has been stabilized somewhat. There is a recognition that the use of the military option by the United States is going to be very dangerous very risky and will be strongly opposed by Beijing and Moscow and will not be supported by Seoul. However, the atmosphere is still not ripe for the initiation of negotiations. There are some uh, hopeful indicators. Uh, the American Secretary of State Rex Tillerson a few weeks ago did indicate the possibility of negotiations even without preconditions. And at the moment, Pyongyang has indicated that it will like to take part in the Winter Olympics in South Korea and talks towards this end may well soon begin. So there's a recognition that there's a stalemate and perhaps some exploratory feelers are being explored. Do you think that's 
what this is about with reference to that meeting between North Korea and South Korea. I mean, we're hearing officially this is about North Korea's entry into the Winter Olympics, but is there a chance it could be a lot more than that? Usually, this is the beginning of some kind of negotiations when both sides are willing to sit down and talk. This is at least an improvement of atmosphere. And uh, given the talks and the actual participation on the part of Pyongyang in the Winter Olympics, there may be a cessation of uh, uh, missile tests on the part of Pyongyang for some months, for, uh, for a short period of time. Uh, we cannot be very hopeful. We can only say that the possibility exists. And it seems that at least uh, the, North, the two Koreas are willing to explore the possibilities. Donald Trump was sort of giving this meeting a lukewarm reception. Why isn't he more positive about it, do you think? I think, I think he f finds it a bit difficult to explain to the American people why he is willing to talk to uh, Pyongyang after all this rhetoric. Uh, you need a certain opportunity, you need a certain process to de-escalate the rhetoric. And as we were saying, uh, Rex Tillerson's statement probably was some kind of feeler, but there, uh, there is no strong support from the White House yet. Uh, certainly, uh, Donald Trump at this stage does not believe that uh, he is ready to make the first move. So perhaps the two careers may make the first move. OK, Joseph, look, we'll have to leave it there, but nice to talk to you this afternoon. That was Joseph Cheng, uh, professor and political analyst uh, at Hong Kong City University. Thank you. At first, President Trump wasn't sure what to think of Kim Jong-un's New Year's offer of talks with South Korea. Rocket Man now wants to talk to South Korea for first time, he tweeted. Perhaps that is good news, perhaps not. We will see. But no sooner had South Korea's President Moon taken Kim up on the offer than UN Ambassador Nikki Haley dismissed it as meaningless so long as the North continues to build nuclear weapons. We won't take any of the talk seriously if they don't do something to ban all nuclear weapons in North Korea. We consider this to be a very reckless regime. We don't think we need a band-aid and we don't think we need to smile and take a picture. In his New Year's speech, Kim boasted that the nuclear button is on his desk and vowed to begin mass production of nuclear warheads and ballistic missiles. Those were just words, but U.S. intelligence has detected what appear to be preparations for another test of an intercontinental ballistic missile. I hope that does not happen. But if it does, we must bring even more measures to bear on the North Korean regime. Indications are the North Koreans are preparing to test their longest range missile, which they celebrated in the form of a gigantic ice sculptor over New Year's. When it was first tested last November, the real missile flew long enough to reach anywhere in the U.S. had it been aimed in the right direction. If preparations continue, it could be ready for launch by the end of this week. By talking peace with South Korea and threatening war with the U.S., Kim Jong-un is playing good cop, bad cop, which the State Department says may be an attempt to drive a wedge between the two allies. If you're looking for the Trump administration to dial it back or tone it down or maybe soften or meekly triangulate the messaging, well, you'd be sorely disappointed. The president once again making it very clear. He not only has a very strong position as it relates to how he expects to handle North Korea, this White House is doing something we have not seen previous White Houses do as it relates to Pyongyang. Let me take you to Twitter for the folks at home that were not able to see this tweet. It's a pretty strong one. He says, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un just stated that the nuclear button is on his desk at all times. Will someone tell his depleted and food-starved regime, please inform him that I, too, have a nuclear button, but it is a much bigger and more powerful one than his, and my button works. I know. I know what you're saying. Really? But you know what? The message is certainly clear, if nothing else. Clearest indication that he has a willingness, Bill, to ratchet up the rhetoric when it comes to Pyongyang, uh, which the folks here at the White House argue, uh, frankly, has flaunted international norms for decades while fleecing the U.S. and China and Russia and others under the threat of war. But as you can well imagine on Capitol Hill, some lawmakers say the president's swagger doesn't help. 
the president's tweets have made it more difficult for diplomacy uh, to, to work. We know that the only reasonable solution to the North Korean crisis is, is through diplomacy, and the president's tweets make that more challenging. Okay, so really what we're talking about here is diplomacy from one perspective and diplomacy as an option from the other perspective. White House officials uh, not long ago saying that, listen, diplomacy, like all other options, remain on the table, though they also point out, Bill, at least to this point, diplomacy has proven fairly ineffective in getting Pyongyang to agree to international norms. Uh, now, moving on to the... Uh uh, the news uh, in the newspapers. Thank you so much, uh, <laughs> Deep to Guess. Sorry, I just I had a little uh, brain, uh, as we say. Uh, joining <laughs> us on set for news around the world, they're starting with reactions from South Korea uh, to Kim Jong Un's New Year's speech. Well, Kim Jong Un, the North Korean leader, did deliver what the Korea Jungang Daily calls a strikingly conciliatory speech on New Year's Day, in which he said he was willing to send a North Korean delegation to next month's Winter Games in, in South Korea, and also promising to reopen a border hotline. Well, in reaction, Seoul, as you see on the front page of the paper, has proposed talks next Tuesday on its side of the border with uh, North Korea to discuss the Games and other issues, of course. Uh, a bit of skepticism, though, about the real <laughs> motives behind Kim Jong-un's uh, speech, though. Well, one opinion writer in the Korea Times wonders if this, quote, olive branch from North Korea is really because it's suffering so much from U.S.-imposed sanctions that it has no other option but to reach out to the South uh, out of pure economic necessity. Now, other conservative leaders in South Korea also believe that, or actually uh, believe rather, that it could be a ruse to so divide Divisions between South Korea and the U.S. Even if this is the case, the left-leaning daily Hankyore says in today's editorial that South Korea must treat this proposal as a, quote, opportunity, uh, adding not so subtly that if uh, South Korea really had such a, quote, true alliance with the U.S., well, then Washington would have no reason to oppose these warming relations, supposed warming relations between the two Koreas. Yeah, speaking of Washington, you found some reactions to Donald Trump's tweet to Kim Jong-un. And that, that one is by far, I think, takes the cake so far. It of does. all his tweets, <laughs> it's got to be the bragging about the button. He just, which many might say is a euphemism for other things. But um, he, it, this really, he just keeps topping himself, doesn't he, every, every day. The North Korean leader may have been conciliatory with the South, as we mentioned, but he was, as ever, aggressive with uh, the U.S. in that New Year's Day speech. And Donald Trump, not one to let things go, uh, decided to taunt Kim Jong-un about the size of his nuclear button saying it's bigger and more powerful. Let's look at a cartoon we found for you on Twitter. Really, it is a, a, a kind of, uh, this Twitter beef is fodder for cartoonists. This cartoon portrays the two leaders as children fighting with Donald Trump saying, hey, fatty, my button is too big for one hand. Is yours ever charged? Of course, uh, multiple references to previous comments that Donald Trump has made. Uh, where the third day of 2018, and this is not even the first Twitter attack by the U.S. president. He's been busy since the beginning of the new year. As one Washington Post writer says, it may be a new year but it's the same old Trump.